Hi, my name is Kevin Hua, and today I'm going to be showing you a cast repair. Cast repairs can be daunting, and I've got a nine step plan to help you out along the way. Here, I've got a cast exhaust manifold, which is typically what I see at my work. So step one is finding the crack and the extent of the crack. We're going to be using die penetrant test. So visually, I've located a crack here, but I'm not sure how far it goes. So I'm going to use that die penetrant to see the extent of the crack. As always, PPE is important. This die penetrant is an aerosol, so I do suggest wearing a mask and some eye protection. For the purpose of this video, I've switched to this manifold, which I've created a crack in, so that you can see it better. Step two, we'll be drilling either end of the crack. What we want to do now is drill out the ends of the crack. What that will do is stop the crack from spreading. Step three, we're going to grind into the crack and watch the spark to see what we can determine about the composition of the cast. So after you've drilled your holes, it also gives you a hint how thick your material is and how deep you need to grind. Step four, we're going to be grinding a few electrodes to see if that spark matches what we found. So here I've got three rods to choose from. I've got a barium-free steel-coated nickel electrode. I've got a high nickel electrode and I've got a 7018. Now that I've got my three electrodes, I'm going to grind them and I'm going to try to match the spark coming off of them to the spark that was coming off of our manifold. When I ground into the manifold, I saw a short, dark yellow spark with an orange secondary spark. So when I ground the electrodes, I was looking to match that spark. I have the barium free, I've got the high nickel, and the 7018. Which one do you think was the best? If you chose the barium free, steel coated nickel electrode, good job. That's the one I'm going to go with. Step five, we're going to preheat the manifold. Step six, we're gonna weld and repair the crack. Step seven, we're gonna perform some stress relief to the part. So step six and seven kind of go hand in hand. And with the rod we've chosen today, we're gonna need to do stress relief at the same time as we weld.
step eight, we're gonna stop and listen to our repair. So after you've completed your weld, you wanna sit here for a minute and listen to your repair. If you hear any pinging or creaking, it's an indication that your weld is not going to take. Step nine, we are going to slow cool our manifold. You don't wanna to spend too much time letting your piece cool as it is. So you'll need to slow cool it. You can put it in sand, you can wrap it up in welding blankets. In my case, I've got some old welding gloves and some old welding jackets. So the reason we want to slow cool is that these two materials cool at different rates and we want the best chance of success. So you never want to shock your cast part. What I mean by that is any cold air or putting it on cold concrete, so what I'm going to do is wrap it up. And now we wait. So we've given this about an hour and a half, which I think is sufficient for this size of part. Let's see how it turned out. Please remember that cast welds are usually never pretty. What's important is that it's a sound weld. I hope that these nine steps have been helpful to you, and I hope that'll keep you efficient and proficient.